<clears throat> Hello, good afternoon. Good, good. Good morning, everyone. Uh, here in the United States and good evening in the Philippines. So just give me some time uh, to share our Facebook live, but I will be live. I'm already live, but I will start our conversation in a bit. Okay, so uh, just give me some time. Okay, uh, good morning everyone again uh, here in the United States and good evening in the Philippines. Uh, we will be talking about specific concerns on the J-1 visa waivers. Uh, this is uh, the hot topic or our J-1 visa holders for Filipino teachers in the United States are very much interested in this topic and I will talk about uh, the rules and regulations around the J-1 visa waivers. This is intended for the J-1 teachers we have. And again, if you have questions, please write down down in the comment section. I will try to answer them as we go live. And again, okay, so marami nang nag-check in. Uh, can you hear me okay? Hi, Mom Grace. Today is my rest day, but I'll do this anyway. Okay, so... <clears throat> I don't have a presentation material because I just came back from the Philippines and this is a very on, uh, timely update. I uh, visited the CFO, but I just want to make a disclaimer. Whatever I say here is not an official statement from the CFO, but this is my opinion. And if you have questions, you can actually write or send me a message or you can actually again write the questions here. So there's a lot of questions being written down already on the comments section if i would not be able to read and answer your questions i apologize so okay ba ang aking volume because i'm not using headsets again okay so this is about the j1 visa process or this is for the visa for exchange visitors particularly for the teachers so any um though this visa type also applies to researchers doctors for purposes of our session today we'll only talk issues affecting our teachers and i will just proceed because i know it's already late in the philippines uh so i'll proceed so i think that i, I hope everyone understands the purpose of the j1 visa program so this is an exchange uh, program where Filipino teachers are sent to the United States hoping that they will be able to exchange their expertise, their knowledge and skills that benefited or will benefit the U.S. students. On the other hand, they are actually um, hoping that they will be able to learn something from their stint in the United States, maximum of five years before they go back to the Philippines, hoping that the Filipino students will also benefit from whatever learning they actually have had during the five years stay in the United States. So once a teacher is given the visa, they are normally issued 
a three-year visa initial stay, but they could actually extend that to, to one year to two years, and that's actually aligned with the recent guidelines of the Philippine government. Uh, they could actually exchange to another one year or two years, assuming that the visa sponsor will support it, and as well as the employer. Okay, bakit ba tayo nag-uusap ngayon? Because again, uh, once the teachers are already here, uh, they would actually find means to stay permanently in the United States. And there's a lot of reasons why they would do that. And that's a very valid uh, hope and plan for them. Unfortunately, the visa type or the nature of the visa requires them to go back to the Philippines and stay there for two years. So the two-year home residency requirement requires you to stay in the Philippines or the country of nationality. So, halimbawa, ang question nyo is, okay, since I could not stay in the United States anymore for more than two years, I have more than five years, if I go back to the Philippines, can I work abroad just to comply with the two-year home residency requirement? The answer is no, unfortunately. You have to go back to the Philippines and stay there for two years to be able to comply with the two-year home residency requirement. So, of course, uh, kung ayaw niyong magbumalik sa Philippines, there are waivers for that. And um, I've shared it for those who are interested. We actually have a Facebook group called the J-1 Visa for Teachers in the United States. And we also have a group chat created for them. So, if you are not aware of that and you would want to actually be updated about the J-1 Visa, you can search uh, through Facebook about the J-1 Visa Facebook group. Um, under the Department of Homeland Security, the following are the visa waivers. Number one, they could actually apply for the no objection statement uh, from the government. So in this case, from the Philippine government, uh, there is actually the EVP, uh, wherein CFO is one of them. So this is actually a committee. Uh, composed of several agencies in the Philippines. So, ang pinaka-common na basis na waiver na ina-apply ng teachers is the no objections statement. In all other countries, that's the all, uh, also the easiest way of obtaining the waiver. But I just want to actually emphasize that hindi lang yon ang available na waiver. Uh, request but interested U.S. Federal Government Agency, also one of them, and this applies in general to researchers or even the teachers who are able to develop an, as a, a methodology or a tool that would benefit the, the federal government agency, in particular the Department of Education, then you may also apply under that category, but generally that applies to researchers. Uh, if you personally believe that you will be subject to persecution after your five-year maximum stay in the United States, you could also apply on that basis, but make sure that you have uh, evidences to support your claim of persecution. Number four, the exceptional hardship. So, uh, financial hardship is not a ground to claim under this base, basis or ground for a waiver, but you have to consult a lawyer to really evaluate your situation and whether or not your situation would fall under exceptional hardship. Exceptional hardship, there's an element of it has to be an exceptional hardship on the part of the U.S. citizen or a green card holder, whether it is a spouse or a child of the student or the exchange visitor or the applicant. Okay? Uh, and then the fifth one is request by a designated state public health department or its equivalent. Uh, this is very uh, very uh, common among, among Filipino doctors who are actually assigned uh, in the remote areas of the United States. So, uh, may tinatawag sila na, na program, na Conrad State 30 program. So, these are actually the program for uh, doctors who are actually assigned in remote areas and where their presence are important. And they are normally given the waiver to not to go back to the Philippines for two years and just be absorbed by their employer to continue to work. So, uh, there is no existing law uh, covering teachers, but again, uh, we'll cover about that kung ano ba ang possibility na meron tayo. So, so far, wala pa akong nakikitang questions, so I'm sorry if I'm switching um, screens here. Uh, we'll go back again. So, for purposes of this conversation, I'll focus our topic on the no-objection statement under the Philippine government. 
uh, I shared with you in our group chat and our Facebook group that under the Philippine rules and regulations affecting waivers of the two-year home residency requirement, the government will automatically approve or in their own initiative will approve applications for no objection statement if number one the skill or profession of the exchange visitor participant is not under the skills list of the philippines unfortunately the teacher is actually one of the listed professions so you have to have uh, a waiver so i somebody is sending me of their uh, their visa stamps uh, saying that they are not subject to the two-year home residency requirement. If that is the case, then you're so lucky and congratulations in advance. But if I were you, I would be very, very sure uh, to make sure na hindi lang nagkamali yung stamping. I would look into your DS-2019 uh, to make sure na hindi talaga kayo subject sa 2-1-E na home resi uh, two-year home residency requir requirement. No? Uh, second, if the applicant is married to a U.S. citizen or a green card holder, or kung may anak silang U.S. citizen residing in the United States, the government will also automatically grant your application for no objection statement. The third one applies to the religious worker. So if you're a priest, a nun, or a missionary working for a recognized religious institution, then you will also be granted automatic no objection statement from the government. And number four, if you have an ailing member, whether it's a direct ascendant or descendant or a spouse. So parents nyo, asawa nyo, mga anak nyo, uh, and they are in the United States and being separated from them will actually cause severe threat to the life of the said family member. Then the government, the Philippine government may grant automatic uh, no objection statement letters. So again, if may mga tanong kayo, please write them down below. So I will try to answer them as we go along. Uh, hello, Ma'am Consuelo Lopez. Tanong ko lang po, Attorney. For 17 years living in wala pa po bang chance na maging immigrant or green card holder? So, Ma'am, I would presume na hindi ka J-1 visa holder. Uh, I would recommend, if you have time, if you can call our office or send me a message so we can talk about your specific issue. Uh, Sir Jan, thanks for watching. Okay, so then let's go about the topics here. And I'm sorry because I don't have the presentation materials available for me to share with you on screen. Uh, Pinag-usapan na natin ngayon yung grounds where the Philippine government would grant automatic no objection statement letters. Uh, Ma'am Queenie, Someone said that if we go on vacation in the Philippines while in a program is counted for the two-year home residency, so if you've been back and forth in PH for a vacation, let's say four months, so it lowers. No, the two-year home residency requirement should be counted after the program. Ching, sir, number po na office nyo. Yes, I will do that later. Uh, sir Consuelo Lopez, mom, I don't think you're, I, I, I'm not so sure if you are a J-1 visa holder. But if you are here in the United States for 17 years, I think please call our office so we could talk about uh, your options. Um, baka may mga available options ka naman. Queenie, RA, attorney, my chance ba mapatuloy ang anak ko mag-aral ng kali sa US if in case mag-expire and two years extension? Ano po ang options? Okay, so I think ma'am that will be part of our conversation today. Uh, to find means paano ba kayo makapag-stay longer? Uh, again, in the United States after your maximum five-year stay. So again, number one is obtaining the no objection statement from the Philippine government. But and we've also already covered what are those situations where you could actually get the no objection statement from the government. Ang tanong nila natin dito: What if wala akong anak na U.S. citizen? I'm not married to a U.S. citizen green card holder, or if I'm not a priest, a nun, or a missionary or kung wala namang nagkasakit sa pamilya ko. Paano ako ngayon magstay in the United States? Okay. According to the regulations of the Philippine government, right? And this is sad news for the teachers though. Uh, because of the recent development, and again, do not take this as an official statement from the Philippine government. This is my opinion. 
and my assessment of the responses to me while I visited the CFO. Uh, they said that teachers are much needed in the Philippines now, especially with the implement implementation of the K-12. to uh, The nature of the program requires you to go back. So that's the rule. And that is still the policy for the teachers to go back to the Philippines. However, if your specific case requires specific reconsideration and upon review of the EVP, they may consider issuing a no objection statement if your situation falls into any of the following. Uh, number one, if during the course of the training, the applicant develops or discovers a medical condition that's, that does not permit him to return to the United States. So, ibig sabihin, pag nagkasakit ka during your program, then they may actually consider giving you a no-objection statement. Number two, if the applicant is age 60 or above, they may give you a, a waiver also in that instance. And number three, if the training or sponsoring institution does not object, to the non-completion of the program of the applicant. So what does that tell us? Ibig sabihin, kung yung situation mo does not fall into any of the uh, automatic grant of the NOS, I would still encourage you to submit a request for no objection statement if you fall into any of these. Nagkasakit ka, you are 60 years old or above, or the sponsoring institution does not object for you to not go back to the Philippines. Okay? So let's see if you have questions here related to what I said. Queenie, I, if I am on petition by my mom, can I use it as a waiver? Um, mom, not necessarily. Uh, even assuming that your visa is already been granted or current na yung priority date, meaning... You are now preparing for your interview in the embassy. Even if mag-interview ka sa embassy, your visa will be denied because you were subject to the two-year home residency requirement because while your case is pending, you availed of the J-1 visa. So, and again, if you would want to discuss more specific about your case, please send us a message or set up an interview date with us. Um... Another area where a teacher could avail of a no-objection statement from the Philippine government is what we call the alternative arrangement. Uh, klaruhin ko lang, while the rule seems to offer that submitting a proposal for a project may be considered as a ground for applying for a waiver, the wording of the rules actually say the EVP committee may offer an alternative arrangement. So, ibig sabihin, uh, unlike kasi sa earlier rules, medyo may confusion siya, the, the way their guidelines were written seems to present that an alternative arrangement is an available ground to apply for a waiver. But with the recent directives that the EVP issued, they make it clear that it is discretionary upon the AVP committee that they may offer the applicant an alternative arrangement, meaning a project proposal. Because again, you have to remember that the purpose of the J-1 visa is for you to go back to the home country, in particular the Philippines, so you could actually share your learning, your skills, or the new methodology that you've learned in the United States wherein the Filipino students could benefit. So in that case, you may subject, uh, present a proposal uh, and you may recommend a ben beneficiary or a group of um, institution in the Philippines where you could actually train them and implement the skills that you've acquired. But again, klaruhin ko lang, alternative arrangement is not an automatic ground of applying for a waiver. You could still submit a request for waiver to the, the EVP and it will be upon the EVP committee to give you an offer if whether or not you will uh, now sub, uh, uh, present an alternative arrangement or a project proposal. 
So, basically, yun yung topic na pinag-uusapan natin ngayon. I will not dwell into the process of uh, the procedure on how to apply the no objection statement or the waiver in general because I think having talked to a number of teachers, they just want to make, to be very clear as to sila ba maka-avail ng no objection statement. So, again, just to summarize it, you can be granted a no objection statement by the Philippine government if uh, you are if your profession is not sub, uh, part of the specified lists of skills if you are married to a US citizen or a green card holder or if you have a US citizen child residing in the United States if you are a nun a priest or a missionary if nag um, if the sponsoring uh, agency will not object to the issuance of the objection statement. And then, the EVP may consider under specific review of your case, kung hindi kayo nag-fall into any of the situations, kung nagkasakit ka during the training, you are 60 years old or above, or, um, again, uh, it has something to do with the sponsors not objecting to your stay in the United States. And again, not an automatic basis for the waiver, you may still submit a request for a waiver for the two-year home residency requirement pag, um, uh, if you believe that your situation will merit an approval from the EVP committee na mag-submit mag -sub ka ng alternative arrangement or a project proposal. So, again, those are the grounds under the Philippine government. Do not forget na under the Department of Homeland Security, no objection statement is just one of the grounds or one of the basis of you being able to uh, uh, still getting a waiver. So outside of the no objection statement, so meaning you don't have to engage or get the approval of the Philippine government if, number one, you would be able to show that you have fear of persecution uh, example, death threats, uh, pag-umuwi ka sa Philippines. If you believe that you will fall into extreme hardship, if you will go back to the Philippines, then you may submit your application directly to USCIS, which will forward it to the Homeland, uh, the Department of Homeland Security for review. Okay? Uh, so that pretty much cover my topic today. So I'm just going now to review questions. Uh, then we will be able to close our live session. Uh, hi, Massimo Tyler. Attorney, ask ko lang po. I just arrived here in the USA on EB3 visa. Okay, and uh, I can answer this later though, but I just want to, to focus my conversation around J1 for now. So... Me personally, and I've had actually worked with some of superintendents uh, in North Dakota or in New Mexico, uh, we are actually encouraging your petitioners to be not to offer you J-1 visas anymore, even though it is the fastest way. Instead, to offer you H-1B or immigrant visas just like what our Filipino teachers are actually going. Uh, Here's my recommendation as to the people who've already gone back to the Philippines and already have complied with the two-year home residency requirement. I know that there are states who have uh, kulang ng, Philippine, ng teachers. And to be honest, of all the, the superintendents that I've talked to, they were very appreciative of the Filipino teachers. Uh, they were, their ranking as far as their school performance is concerned has improved because of our Filipino teachers. Uh, if you've already been, co if you already complied the two-year home residency requirement, I would encourage you to reach out to your former employers and ask them if they can file an H-1B for you. By the way, I just received a notification this morning that if your school is subject to the H-1B cap, they already reached the maximum number for 2020, meaning. Uh, you cannot submit an application for 2020 anymore. So if you will be uh, interested, it will be for 2021. However, if the school you were working in before is not subject to the cap, dahil meron silang arrangement with the university or they are actually affiliated with the university, 
it means they are not subject to the numerical limits. You can, they can apply H-1B for you anytime. And once approved, you can come back to the United States after you've complied with the two-year home residency requirement and then apply for H-1B. Uh, for specific conversations around the, your options, kung mas tama ba sa inyo ang H-1B or immigrant visa or if you are already here under J-1 on your first year or if you are already in your fourth year or fifth year, I would encourage you to reach out to us so we can have a specific conversation around your case. Uh, I'll go back here sa mga questions lang. I'll just update this. Richard, good morning, Attorney. Gano pa katagal ang alternative arrangement in terms of processing? So, Assuming that you were given the offer by the EVP committee to subject a processing, I mean the alternative arrangement, ang sabi nila, they could actually decide on your application within two weeks to two months. Ang variable na lang doon is depending on the Philippine consulate or the embassy handling your case. To, I'm sorry, kung ano yung frequency ng transmission of the reports from the Philippines to the Philippine, the Philippine embassy in Washington. Pero mabilis lang daw nilang i-decide yon or reviewed once the people, the reviewing committee are available and uh, if the, the timing of the transmittal of the documents to the US is uh, nakaschedule na. So yun lang talaga ang limitation nila, Sir Richard. Uh, Sir Gra Ma'am Grace, at yun yung sa doctors na nasa isolated areas, pundi rin bang i-apply yun sa teachers na nasa Indian reservation? So, uh, Ma'am Grace, ito yung sinasabi natin na currently, this particular program is available only for doctors. But then again, nothing will stop you from submitting as an, an opinion directly to the Department of Homeland Security if the case of the teachers in remote areas will apply. So again, you could still avail or explore that option. Malay mo mag-grant, di ba? So again... We can challenge existing policies and procedures. If there is no available option for you, it doesn't mean that it's not available for you. We can always challenge and maybe make that proposal. Uh, from Ma'am Ma Alma, Parang third year ko na po of teaching here sa US. Pwede na po ba ako mag-apply? Ma'am, no. Uh, even if the petitioner will offer you an H-1B or an immigrant, you are still subject to the... To your home residency requirement, you are still required to file for a waiver. But since you are still in your third year, you are still eligible for to apply for the two uh, two year additional extension because you can stay here maximum five years. Uh, hi, sir. Is Mom MJ attorney? How many times a teacher can be a J one visa holder? Um, so as far as I, I'm concerned, though, wala namang sinasabi na there's a maximum limit, but I would, if I were you, I would not avail of another J-1 if you are already a J-1 visa holder in, in, in the past because you are just wasting your time. So, according to the rules, if you are already a J-1 visa holder, you could stay in the United States maximum of five years. After that, you need to go back to your home country for another year. Uh, after you've complied with your two-year home residency requirement and then mag-apply ka ulit ng J-1. But, if you already comply with the two-year home residency requirement, why would you apply for another J-1? In that case, what I would encourage you to do is basically call your previous employer and ask them if they could actually file a petition for you. As a matter of fact, kung halimbawa, umuwi ka na, tapos ka na dun sa five-year uh, maximum term on J-1 and you did not qualify for the no-objection statement, since you are required to stay outside the United States for two years, and if you have a very good performance, I would encourage you to talk to your employer and say, Sir, I'm going back to the Philippines to comply with the two-year program, but they could actually start the labor certification process because it could take 18 months to 24 months, which is basically equivalent to your two-year home residency requirement to stay in the Philippines. By the time you complied with your two years, tapos na rin yung labor certification mo 
na pwede na rin nilang i-file ang immigrant visa mo. Ibig sabihin, pagpasok mo, green card holder ka na. Just like what happens to the nurses. So, yun yung magiging uh, the, the proposal I would give to the teachers who've already maxed out five years and they are required to stay in the Philippines for two years. Before you even leave the United States, you could have the conversation with your teachers if they could actually start the labor certification process for you. Uh, Ma'am Priscilla, not subject po, paano mag-apply ng H1? Ma'am, uh, I would recommend that you call our office next week. Uh, we are closed on weekends. I just do this Facebook Live to, for the benefit of the teachers. But uh, I think, assuming that the stamping is correct, you are actually in a, in a better place. You don't, you don't need a waiver. And if your uh, employer is supportive of filing an H-1B or even an immigrant petition for you, uh, I would I would encourage you to uh, to call our office now. As uh, Ma'am Rowena, two-year residency talaga bang kailangan two years yon? What if after less than two years na-approve your sponsorship? Ma'am, you are still required to comply with the two-year home residency requirement. Even if your visa is already available at the embassy, the embassy will look for evidences that you've already stayed in the outside the United States or in the Philippines for two years. So, I think the rules are very clear on that one. Uh, Sir Kevin, hi sir. I know one of the requirements for EB2 is five years experience had... Okay, sir, EB2 is not a J1 conversation. Please send me a message later. I will respond next week. Okay, uh, any other question before we start? And again, thank you for the people who've joined in. Um, J1 is a very complicated uh, process, especially if you're asking for a waiver. And if you would want, again, to talk about or ask questions specific to your case, I would recommend that you reach out to us and set up an appointment so we could talk about your options. Uh, reviewing ko lang to make sure that I didn't miss anyone. Kevin Ruela, can you please? Carrie Lou, attorney na kalagay sa visa ang DS29 is not subject to the two year. Do we need to apply? No. If you are not subject to the 212E, then you don't need a waiver. If your employer is willing to file an H1B or immigrant petition for you, they can do that immediately, anytime. Uh, MJ, uh, nasagot ko na yan. Okay, so wala na yata. Uh, again, uh, maybe another last question. I'm sorry for the call. Uh, from Rolly, attorney, automatic po ba na denied ang waiver kung skill list po ang teacher? So again, sir. Uh, we've discussed the grounds where the Philippine government will issue uh, automatically the no objection statement. Uh, one of that, kasi, uh, the reason of that is kasi nga, nandun yung profession mo sa skill lists. So if you don't, uh, kung wala ka dun sa grounds where you could actually get a no objection statement, there are other options where you could explore. Uh, if you'd want to discuss your specific case, uh, reach out to us please. Uh, from Sir Char Charlie, what's the chance of a deportee returning back to the United States after I-130 was? Okay, so again, this is at the out of topic, but this is a very easy issue. Anyway, Charlie, if you've been deported before, there are question whether you're subject to the 5-year or the 10-year uh, ban. Please reach out to us if you want to discuss in more detail. Sir John, sir, what do you mean by correct visa stamping if not subject to 21E? Uh, if you actually look into your passport, the J-1 visa has an annotation that says whether or not you are subject to 212E. 212E is actually the two-year home residency requirement. So, kung visa stamp nyo, sinabing you are not subject to, then you are lucky. If you are, if the annotation says you are subject to 221E, then you are required to apply for a waiver. Sir Alfred, for married G1 visa holders po ba mag-apply ng US kahit walang annulment sa Philippines? For married G1 holders po ba mag-apply ng kahit walang annulment? Sorry, hindi ko maintindihan. Okay, so I will just try to 
I think you're saying if a, an applicant married in the Philippines but got divorced here and applied for a J1, okay, that's my assumption. But assuming, sir, that is your line of questioning, uh, kahit naman divorce ka dito, the Philippine government should honor the divorce here, even if you are not officially annulled in the Philippines. Searching, uh, sir, pwede ba i-reach kayo through video call? Yeah, ma'am, uh, we can talk by a messenger anyway. Alfred, yung mga kasal po sa Pilipinas, pwede po ba sila makapag-apply ng NOS sa Pilipinas? Yes, sir. Uh, even if you actually just got divorced here, uh, you will still be granted an NOS if your situation falls into any of the basis that we've discussed earlier. Kang Ma'am May, Hi, sir. What is the process for sponsorship? If we will be invited by somebody from the U.S., I'm not so sure, ma'am, if you are talking about J-1 visa. Uh, if you are talking about a J-1 visa, there's a lot of J-1 visa agencies in the Philippines. You could actually search that through the net or ask your friends. And if you qualify, if you are one of the teachers or a researcher or a doctor, uh, there's a lot of agencies looking for you. So maybe you can call them. Uh, Mong Queenie, do you still have to do a project if you stayed? No. If you decide to, st to go back to the Philippines and stay there for two years, you don't have to do anything but just stay in the Philippines. All you needed to do is present evidences na nagstay ka sa Philippines for two years. Gayan, I'm 28. Can I apply U.S. University? I heard that it's hard to get. Okay, sir, you're talking about student visa. Search the net. Contact the school. The school will help you uh, get an student visa mom queenie thanks for the clarification this conversation was very helpful thank you mom mj attorney how about the j2 dependent spouse can they work outside ph like canada after the program unfortunately though the guidelines from the philippines says the j2 is subject to the same guidelines and restrictions as the j1 so for them to be able to comply with the two-year home residency requirement they have to stay in the philippines for two years Mark, attorney, can we avail assistance from your office for the alternate arrangement? Sir, call. I think we have a scheduled appointment next week. Oh, again, maraming maraming salamat po. Pag mayroon pa kayong tanong, uh, just feel free to write your questions below. Uh, again, uh, thank you for watching. Send us an email or a message a mes on Messenger or call our office to have a specific consultation about your specific case. Uh, again, maraming maraming salamat po.